Yo, what's going on guys? You're watching PSD to WordPress Lesson 6 and in this video we're going to start styling up the main content. Alright gang, so we are getting on very nicely. So far we've done this header and we've done this banner right here. So in this lesson I want to move down to this stuff and style up that baby. So, let's have a quick look in the PSD to see where we're up to. So we're going to go from here downwards. So first of all, we need that red little line at the bottom of the image, and then we need to style all this stuff uh, stuff up right here. All right, that should be simple enough. Let's start by grabbing that image then. So it is the main banner image. And I'm going to give that a border bottom of six pixels solid, and the color of that little red line you saw was F3-4949. Okay, so let's just have a look at that. Perfect, there we see it. All right then, so the next thing we want to do is move down to this menu thing right here. Remember, that's that little kind of flag in the middle. So we need to give it that background image and then move the text itself off the page. So let's grab the home menu section, home hyphen menu, and then it's the H2 within that that we want to style. And we'll give it that background image, the URL, which is in the images folder, forward slash, and then it's like menu head, that's it. Perfect, but you can see it's repeating itself all the way across, so we don't want that to happen. Let's say background hyphen repeat, no repeat, and then just one of them will show. But it's not fully showing, and that's because it's not quite big enough, it's not high enough. Okay, it is wide enough, we need to reduce the width, but it's not quite high enough. So let's explicitly give it some dimensions. We'll say the width to be about 156 pixels, that's about right, and then the height is about 74 pixels of that image. I'm not just plucked these numbers out of thin air, um, I did actually work out the size of this image before. All right, so the next thing we need to do is do a text indent of about 10, or minus 10,000 pixels rather, so it scoots that text off the page. Now we need to centralize it, so we'll give it a margin zero top and bottom, and then auto left and right. It zooms into the center right there, but there's still a little gap between this and that border. I don't want that. And the best way for me to fix that, I think, is by giving it a position value of relative. Now what I can do is offset that little logo, or that little image rather, by using the top property and say minus four pixels. But I needed this position of relative to do that, okay? So, now we've done that, let's move down to these list items right up. First of all, I want to grab the UL, which is there, it's within the home menu section still. So let's grab that, home menu UL. And now, by default, ULs have this padding on the left, the browsers give it to them. I want to strip it of that padding because it kind of just messes up with the, uh, the dimensions that I'm going to give to these LI tags. So I'm going to say padding zero to take it away. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is give it a list style type of none. And that's going to take away the little circles you saw at the start here a minute ago. All right. Right, next thing we need to do is grab the li tags themselves. So let's say home menu li. And we're going to float these to the left. Float left. And the width is going to be 42% about. So that gives me 8% for each column uh, to give to margin, right? Because then 8 plus 42 makes 50. 50 plus 50 is 100. So it makes sense, right? So 42% for the width. The padding is going to be 0, just to strip anything that might be there already. I don't think there was, but anyway. And then the margin is going to be 20 pixels to the top, 0 to the right, 20 pixels to the bottom, then 8% to the left, right? Now you can see each one of these LI tags now has this margin to the left, there, and also on this side, there. Now, here it's fine, but on these ones, I don't want the margin on the left, I want the margin on the right, so we have a bigger central column there that has space in it, and this stuff is all moved over here like that. Now to do that, I can just target these LI tags and override this margin. And to do that, I'm going to have to use the nth child pseudo class. So I'll say home menu li, then pseudo class, nth child, and then I'm going to say odd to get all the odd ones right here. Yeah, And then I'm going to change that margin property. And it's going to be 20 pixels to the top, 
then it's going to be 8% to the right, then it's going to be 20 pixels down below, then 0 to the left. So now we have that central column there of space. These move over to the left, these to the right, and it looks a lot better. All right, now if you want to learn more about this kind of stuff, I've gone through that in my CSS for Beginners playlist. You can check out that. I'll leave a link to the, uh, the playlist down below in the description. So now we're going to move on, and we're going to style up the text within these li tags. All right, so let's first of all grab this dish class. That's the name of the dish, right? Um, we're going to give this a float property of left, so we can float that to the left, and then we'll give it a color of about 555, which is a medium gray. We'll give it a font weight of bold, perfect. And I think we'll give it, in fact, that will do for now. We'll come back to this in a minute because there is another few things I want to do to it. But for now, we'll move on to the price. And we're going to float the price to the right. Float to the right, just like that. And then again, give it a color of 555 five, five, and a font weight of bold, just like above. And then that will do also for now. I am going to come back to both of these because there's something I want to show you in a minute, which is quite cool. But for now, let's move on to this description. I'm just going to copy and paste that because I can't be bothered writing it out. Um, you know me by now, very lazy. So let's go to this. And what I want to do is, first of all, clear those floats. Okay, because currently it's sitting up here. I want to clear the floats. Oh, clear both rather, not clear float. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> clear both. And then what we're going to do is display it as a block level element because by default, span tags are inline. So we want it to display as block so it's 100% width like that. All right then, so we've got that. And we're going to change the color to a slightly lighter gray, about 999. Yeah, that will do. And the font style is going to be italic. Then the font size was a little bit smaller, I think. I'm going to set this to about 14 pixels, just like that. Oops, italics not work because we've got a random W there. That's fine. And then this is the neat little trick I want to show you. If we take a look at the PSD, you can see these little lines right here. Now, unless you start absolutely positioning things, then it's going to get a little tricky, especially when they're all different lengths. You'd probably have to do each one differently. But I'm going to show you a little trick now that we can do without any of that. And it's quite simple. What I'm going to do is give this description thing here a padding top of about 10 pixels. Right? Then I'm going to give it a border top of one pixel solid and then a light gray, which is about DDD. Right? So if I move away from this now, you can see that little border right there. Now, I need to give this a position property of relative so that I can nudge it upwards a little bit because I want this line to be up here. And I will nudge it up by about minus 8 pixels, not 18, minus 8 pixels, like that. All right, so now you can see this line going across there, but it's going over this and it's going over this. So to combat that, what we need to do is change the stacking order. We want this to be above the line and give it a background of white so that it appears above the line. Now to change the stacking order, we need to give it a position property. So I'm just going to say position relative, first of all. And now it has that position property, I can change the stacking order of it. I can give it a Z index property. Now, I go into Z indexes in my CSS positioning tutorial series, so I'll leave a link to that video down below. You can learn about that there. Uh, but for now, I'm going to say Z index, and it's going to have one, which is greater than zero. Okay, then a background, and by the way, this has a Z index of zero by default. All elements have that by default. So a background of white and a padding right of about. 15 pixels like that okay so now you can see that this line stops right here because you have that padding and it's got a background color of white and it's got a z index of one so it positions itself on top of that line and so the line can't be seen underneath okay we're going to do exactly the same for this price thing right here we're going to say position 
relative. And remember, we need to give it that position property so that we can control the Z index. That's the whole idea of that position property. Z index one, so that it's greater than zero, which is what this line, this border currently is, so that it appears on top of the line. Then we need to give it a background of white, so the, light, uh, so the line can't be seen behind the element at all. And then a padding left this time of about 15 pixels as well. So now the line can't be seen behind this little bit also. So now if I click off, you can see we have these lines that are all different lengths now that are going to these text portions. And uh, yeah, it looks pretty cool. Doesn't matter how long your text is here, it could go up to here and the line would only go up to here. All right, so that's a cool little trick. Um, that I like to use when things like this occur. So we've done those now, we've done the menu, I'm pretty happy with how that looks. Again, this isn't pixel perfect, I'm not trying to do that now because the whole aim of this tutorial series is about converting HTML into WordPress. So we wanna just get some workable HTML and CSS to turn into a WordPress theme. So let's move on to these babies right here and this should be pretty straightforward. So this is the featured section, I think. Let's have a look, yep, featured. So it's got an idea of featured. So let's grab that first of all. And I'm gonna give it a margin top of about 100 pixels. Uh, oh, by the way, you'll notice that that margin didn't work, right? And we need to fix something. And that is because if I hover over this UL right here, let's move up, this UL, you can see it's got no height. This blue is the height of that element. It's got no height, but it should be this high. And that's because we've not cleared these floats right here because all of these LI tags are floated. And so therefore the height of this collapses to this height and we can't apply margin to the elements which come after this property or this element rather effectively, all right? Now, again, I talk about this in my CSS positioning playlist, so I'll leave a link that to, to that down below. But essentially what I need to do is clear these floats and I can do that by using the after pseudo class. Again, I talk about all this in the CSS positioning playlist, so go check that out if you like. But all I need to do is say content, give it an empty string, clear both, and then display as block. And now you can see that margin just appeared and if I hover over the UL again, it regains that full height. Awesome. So let's style these things right here then. We need to grab the featured UL first of all. So featured like that. And we wanna grab the UL tag within it like that. And then we're gonna strip away that default padding we get. Perfect. So now we've done that, we can start styling these LI tags up. So I'll say featured LI. And then what we are gonna do is say float to the left and then give it a width of 23% that leaves me 2% on each LI tag for some margin so I'll give it a margin of 1% all the way around that's 2% uh, in total left and right remember and then I'll give it a list style type of none just to get rid of those little circles now what I want to do is grab the images within those li tags. So I'll say featured li image, and I'm gonna set the width of these images to be 100% of the li tag, like that. Perfect, and we also need to give it a margin bottom um, of about 10 pixels, something like that, perfect. Now let's style these things up right here. So let's grab the A tags within the featured LIs. So featured LI A. And then the first thing I wanna do is give it a color of that deep gray, which is 333. And then text decoration is gonna be none. And then we're gonna float them to the left like that. My typing is currently terrible. All right. Final thing we need to do is grab the span, which is this dollar sign right here and the amount. So let's grab the featured li span, and then we're gonna float this to the right. Oh God, what we're we doing. We're gonna float this to the right, and we'll give it a color of that deep gray as well, which is 333. All right, perfect. So now guys, we're in a good position just to crack on with the footer. Now I'm not gonna do it in this lesson. 
I'll do that in the very next lesson. But you can see so far, it's looking pretty good. I'm quite happy with that so far. So we'll just finish up this footer in the next lesson. Then we can start turning this into an awesome uh, WordPress theme. So until then, guys, if you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to leave them down below. Otherwise, don't forget to subscribe, share, and like, and I'll see you in the very next one.